The polls are expectedly tightening as we get closer and closer to Election Day, and a lot of people are now making their predictions. For example, Professor Alan Lichtman, who is admittedly very divisive, just made his prediction last month using the 13 keys that he's used forever, and he determined that Kamala Harris is the favorite to win the presidency. Now, I understand if people are apprehensive about him, but he does have an undeniably good track record. And if you listen to some of the interviews that he was doing back in 2016, some of the things that he was saying about Donald Trump were spot on. And not a lot of people heard those things in mainstream media, but he was one of few people saying it. So he predicted that Kamala Harris is going to win for what it's worth. But there are other people making predictions and you could seek out those people. But the one that I want to focus on in particular is one that I find the most valuable, the prediction of Philadelphia filmmaker Michael Moore. And I value his predictions because even though he doesn't have some system or, you know, he's not overly technical or scientific, he has such a good read on things. And he's one of the few people to predict the 2016 election accurately. And then he went on to accurately say that Biden would win back in 2020. So he's somebody who I absolutely respect because I think that he he has a good gut instinct, and on top of that, he bases his predictions on things that matter that others don't necessarily pick up on. So he published a piece in Substack where he predicts that Kamala Harris is going to win the 2024 presidency. And he says that Trump is going to lose because his path to victory is so much more narrow than Harris's. And he even goes so far as to say that his gut tells him that there's going to be an uprising and women turning out to vote that could lead to a Harris landslide. Although, having said that, though, he does have a couple of caveats. But before we get to what he says specifically, I'm going to play a CNN clip for you where he shares his reasoning. I honestly think we're going to have one of our largest turnouts ever. I don't think that many people are going to stay home. I certainly hope not uh, because of everything that's at stake. But for this happens every kind of Democrats because Democrats, they're such a frightened group of people. It's it, it's I still I mean, people, they still think that Trump is going to win. This is kind of shocking to me. Like, don't you live w with people? Are, do you, are you not aware that there's going to be a tsunami of women voting between now and Election Day? That, that they were told two and a half years ago that they no longer control their own bodies. They no longer have a say. If they get pregnant, they, an unplanned pregnancy, the law now is that in many of our states that you have to have that baby. And, and if we have to do whatever we have to do, sort of the legal version of strapping you down to the table until you birth that baby then so be it that's the law of the land now and 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 anybody who thinks that women are going to stay home that women are going to tolerate this and put it do you not know any women do you not live with a woman do you is how you is there a next door neighbor is there somebody you could just go ask them so what do you think about my gender here my my gender Nobody can tell me what to do with with my body. And, and maybe some people should. I'm just saying. But seriously. So to him, this election is going to be decided by women, namely because of Roe v. Wade being overturned. Now, to her credit, Kamala Harris is so much better at talking about this issue than Joe Biden. And she could get a boost because of it. I mean, if you go back to some of what Biden said about this issue, sure, he was vocalizing support for codifying Roe v. Wade, but he seemed genuinely disinterested in the subject and couldn't really provide any examples that demonstrate how disastrous this decision by the Supreme Court was. So Kamala Harris is much, much better on this issue than Biden. And I don't think that Michael Moore is wrong to think that the prospect of codifying Roe v. Wade might drive up turnout because this is generally what we've seen. You know, we saw it in 2022 and subsequent special elections have kind of shown how powerful this issue is. It is a galvanizing issue. With that being said, the election is still very close in swing states, according to polls. And here's the thing. If they're off by even a point in either direction, the results could be drastically different. But I want you to listen to CNN analyst Harry Enten, who's going to explain the difference in polling discrepancies between 2020 and 2022 elections. And I think that that's going to give us some insight about what to expect in 2024. How confident should anyone on earth feel that these numbers would actually stick? OK, so I consistently say this race is too close to call. So I decide it's a go back 
through history, okay? And this, to me, says everything. How much do the state poll averages miss by, all right? The average error since 1972 in the close races in those battleground states we've been looking at, 3.4 points, 3.4 points. Every single state, all seven of those key battleground states are within 3.4 points. What's the chance for an even larger error? You know, we talk about the margin of error, right? So what is that 95% confidence interval? What is that true margin of error? 5% of errors in state polling averages are off by more, off by more than 9.4 points. These battleground states are well within that. I want you to remember this number because the bottom line is this race is going to be too close to call almost certainly all the way till election day. It's definitely going to be within this interval, and it's most likely going to be within this interval. So the bottom line is the state polling averages tell us what it tells us is it's just a race that is too close to call. Maybe one candidate has a slight advantage over the other one, but the bottom line is it is way too close to call, and it will remain so. Superimpose all of this really important information that you just gave us on the electoral map. Yeah, okay. So let's say the polls are exactly right. If the polls are exactly right, Kamala Harris gets 276 electoral votes to Donald Trump's 262 because she carries those Great Lake battleground states despite losing North Carolina, Georgia, and Arizona. But let's say we have a polling miss like we had in 2020. What happens then? Well, then Donald Trump wins the election in a blowout with 312 electoral votes because he carries all these Great Lake battleground states, plus Nevada, plus the other states he was leading in, Arizona, North Carolina, and Georgia. But 2020 is just one election. What happens if we have a polling miss like 2022? Well, in that particular case, now the winner has flipped again. And Kamala Harris wins in a blowout with 319 electoral votes because she retakes those Great Lake battleground states, carries North Carolina, Georgia, and Arizona. In other words, 2020 pollsters underestimated Republicans and 2022 pollsters underestimated Democrats. Now, between those two elections, ask yourself, what changed? Well, obviously, Roe v. Wade was overturned, so odds are if the polls are incorrect again and they are underestimating one party, we can reasonably deduce that they're likely underestimating Democrats, as was the case in 2022 because of Roe. Now, there's also a lot of polling experts who say that the markets, the polling markets, that is, they're being flooded with more junk polls that skew towards Republicans that seem to be giving Trump a boost. Now, we'll have to wait to see if that bears out when the results actually come in. But it seems like these polls disproportionately favor Republicans. I don't know if that's purposefully or if they're just bad polls. But either way, I don't think that it is unreasonable to think that maybe Kamala and Democrats are being underestimated in these polls. So Michael Moore, I think, has a good reason to believe that women are going to drive up turnout in 2024 since they've turned out in large numbers in 2022 and subsequent special elections. But still, this prediction hinges basically on him disregarding the polls to an extent, at least. Right. I mean, the polls still show that Kamala Harris would win narrowly, but he's saying she'll win and Trump could lose in a landslide. So if he does end up being right, then I feel like there's no going back. Michael Moore is the best predictor in American politics when it comes to elections. But again, he has to disregard polls to at least a small extent. So he's going to address that in the following clip. When you look at the polls, when you look at what you're seeing in these all important states, including Michigan, which you talk a lot about, do you do you feel do you not put credence in those polls that show what is a dead heat here? I don't think it's a dead heat. I, th I think, and I'm not saying I don't put credence in them, but I'll just go back to t the morning of election day, 2016, on the front page of the New York Times, where according to their latest poll, uh, said that uh, uh, Hillary, quote, has an 85% chance of winning today's election. Trump only has a 15% percent chance. That was the morning of the election. All right. No, I don't think people should be running their lives based on these polls. They I think polls that are polling people on the issues are probably more accurate. But on on the candidate itself, I, I think what I'm concerned, I'll give you an example, because you mentioned, uh, you know, uh, there are those Democrats that are trying to get her to, you know, tone it down, you know, that's something women have been told for decades. You know, now, now you better tone that down. 
Yeah, that's what she, the reason she's so progressive, because she believes in a woman's right to choose. She believes that 14-year-olds should not be able to take an AR-15 into a school, and she's going to ban these assault rifles that used to be banned. That Republicans actually used to vote in favor of the assault weapons ban 30 years ago. Now, all you go down all her positions and they line up exactly with where the majority of Americans are at. The majority of Americans believe climate change is real. The majority of Americans uh, uh, believe the minimum wage is too low. I'll be honest, this is where he starts to lose me because I don't think that this argument is as strong as the previous argument that we heard. Of course, polls aren't gospel and they don't translate into actual votes, but Kamala Harris is not a progressive even though the electorate might perceive her to be a progressive. But the same argument that he's making about Americans being aligned with her on policy could have been made about Hillary Clinton as well. I mean, sure, she was deeply unpopular as a candidate, but she still supports a lot of the policies that Kamala supports. $12 an hour minimum wage, thankfully Harris is at 15, but also Hillary Clinton said that climate change is real, but she's still lost. And it's because even though... Americans might agree more with Democrats on policy. They don't necessarily vote based on policy. They vote mostly based on vibes. And that might sound condescending to say, but elections have kind of shown that that's how a lot of Americans vote. Not all of them, but a lot of them, namely undecided voters who are going to determine the outcome of the election. So I think that that is a weaker argument for him to make. But to be fair, his reasoning about women driving turnout because of Roe is actually sound and i think he's onto something but he does have a very important caveat that we have to touch on so he says that things could still go south for kamala harris because he says that biden's complicity with israel's genocide in gaza has absolutely suppressed turnout in states like michigan and he would know because he is in the state of michigan and he also says that harris could actually demoralize the democratic party's base even more if she continues to go down this path where she runs to the right. Now he says runs to the center in the article that we're about to read, but she's running to the right. She's adopting the Republican policy on the border. She's adopting the Republican policy on uh, fracking. So I would say that him characterizing this as her running to the center is not correct. She's running to the right. We'll call it what it is. But nonetheless, here's his reasoning. He writes, another mistake that could be made in these final four to five weeks is if Harris is advised by her wealthy donors to shun the left and drop her more progressive positions in favor of a move to the center. This too could reduce or depress the vote for Harris, especially among the base. I know many of you don't want to hear that, but I'm just trying to warn you that the actions of party hacks and pundits have consequences. And he goes on to say what a lot of us on the left have been saying for a very long time, that she needs to focus on non-voters as opposed to moderate Republicans, because there's not that many moderate Republicans left in actuality. The party has gone off the deep end. And so whatever moderate Republicans still exist, they're either voting for Donald Trump anyway and sucking it up, or they're already choosing to opt for Kamala Harris as an anti-Trump vote. But those people are a very small portion of the population, whereas the potential non-voters that she could mobilize could make all the difference here. And I think that if a campaign made an effort to appeal to some of these people who have never voted, that could be all the difference, right? So he's making a prediction here, but he's cautious, which I respect. And he notes that things can still go south. Now, Harris just proposed a plan to have Medicare cover the cost of long-term care for seniors. I think that that right there is a great move. That is much more effective than a rally with Liz Cheney, for example, where she praises Liz Cheney's dad, who's a war criminal who should be in prison right now. Those kinds of things are bad. They turn off the base. But I will say there's a difference between turning off the base and angering the base by not doing what they want or not appealing to them and turning off the base by basically spitting in their faces. That is what Hillary Clinton did in 2016, and it cost her dearly. Now, Biden did make a lot of overt appeals to the left after that bitter primary between him and Bernie Sanders in 2020, and he won. Harris is angering the base like Biden by not listening to what the base wants on Gaza policy, but she's not going out of her way to spit in the faces of leftists. So that's one thing that she has going for her, although they still will be pissed off. We still are pissed off if you don't do what we say you should do on Gaza, especially if the rest of the country agrees with us. But, I mean, 
That's Michael Moore's prediction. I don't know if I'm as optimistic as he is, but I do appreciate him making this prediction. And I feel better about the election because he said this, because again, Michael Moore has a fantastic track record. He predicted Trump in 2016 and Biden in 2020. So if he feels confident that Biden, or excuse me, that Harris is going to win this election, then I feel a little bit more confident at least, but you know, we're not going to know until election day. Nobody knows uh, what's going to happen. Nobody has a crystal ball except for Kyle Kalinske, corny joke. I've said it before, but we just, we don't know. And with the polls being this close, I think that these kinds of predictions are important because there's a lot of factors that a lot of us won't know about or even contemplate until election day takes place where we can look at the numbers and see the results but you know all we can do is speculate and i think that that take from michael moore makes sense it's sound and you know if you're panicking maybe this will help reassure you a little bit as it did for me you think you just fell out of a coconut tree 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 tree, tree. <laughs> tree. Tree? You think you just fell out of a coconut tree? 